What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna be doing the top five things I love about this 2024 Yamaha Grizzly 700. This is a special edition, and obviously it has power steering. I've currently had this machine for a total of four days. That is it. So the video, Yamaha Grizzly versus Honda Rubicon is yet to come. Not gonna do that yet, just because I wanna get some serious time on this thing and really get used to it first because it's growing on me. I actually like it now more than I did at first. But you can see there, 223 miles. So we're about due, we are due for the first oil change. Well, none of that matters there. Yeah, this is all just trip meter stuff. How many hours? 11.5. We just washed it. That way it can go back to the dealer to get the Warren VRX 3500 pound winch. The exact same winch that I have on the Rubicon here that has held up extremely well to every kind of abuse, including what you see here, very well. So of course I went with the exact same thing again on here, 3,500 pounds because it's overkill. The XTR comes with a 2,500 pound, I believe, Yamaha branded Warren. I'm gonna do a video talking about the top five things I dislike about the Honda, oh God. Excuse me, I'm gonna be doing that a lot. I will do a video talking about the top five things I hate, dislike about my Yamaha Grizzly. First, we're gonna go ahead and start with the five things I love, and that's what's gonna be in this video. So let's get right into it. So the number one thing I like about the Honda, I'm just kidding, not really, but that was terrible. The number one thing I love about the Yamaha Grizzly 700 is the looks. I'll go ahead and do a quick run around so you can see that. The way this thing looks, even without the upgraded front bumper, which I plan on doing, which fully replaces this factory one, they make a Yamaha accessory, beautiful front bumper, I'm gonna do it. But the looks of this thing, in my opinion, are among some of the best. That is just a mean looking machine, especially with these 27 inch Maxazillas that are on here, which I do plan on changing, just because they're not exactly what I need. The colors are beautiful. You can get so many different colors. These are painted plastics, I believe, but you can see the sparkle and the sunshine there. Truly beautiful colors. You got a really nice Yamaha badge, nice letters, say Grizzly. I like these stickers, but I'm not a huge fan of the blue, actually, now that I look at it. So I will probably change those or take them off completely. I think just the smooth silver and black will look great and then just leave that. So I'll probably do that in the future. You have these very beautiful 14 inch Yamaha factory wheels. And you gotta admit, that's a very good looking wheel for a four wheeler. Probably not gonna see that anywhere else. Even in the aftermarket, I don't think you're gonna find a wheel that good looking. So the front's aggressive. The handlebars are aggressive. Headlight pod. I'm a fan of the real badging. Even though like that right there is just plastic. I do like it. You have the real letters here. Proven off-road. I don't think the Honda has any actual badge like that. In the back, again, very beautiful. You have the nice LED light. I'll turn the key. I'll show you guys the headlights now. Low beam. So you see you have the LED tail light. Very good looking. The XTR has a nice color. All of them, they've always done good colors with these Grizzlies. Comes factory with LED headlights. The third headlight on the pod, you've seen in every video you've ever seen, is halogen. Don't know why they did that. Disgusting. We will change that. But that is the number one thing I like about the Grizzly, is the looks. Number two, my second favorite thing. The engine. The power of this Grizzly. Now, I was a full-time Honda rider. I'd say at the current moment, I'm still a Honda guy overall. I think I would still choose a Honda over these. Now I know, that, I don't know. That's, that's probably gonna change because of the power. On the Honda, I'm gonna do a little bit of comparing here, but on the Honda, when you're going about 45 miles an hour, that's all you're gonna get. It's wound out. This Grizzly, even at its top speed of 64 miles per hour, doesn't feel maxed out. It's not struggling. It just feels like it can handle it. And it's maintaining that speed perfectly fine. I love when I'm traveling uphill, trails, whatever. I'm going 50. I can mash on it and still gain speed. 
So for me, the power is big and it's nice. I mean, you don't have V-twin power. You don't have 850 Can-Am or 1000 power, but this is also great, great power. It's a 700 single cylinder. So I don't know what you're really comparing it to. I guess a Suzuki and a Can-Am 700 now, but the power to me is plenty. The third thing I'm gonna go ahead and say is reliability is the overall reliability of these. I've seen a lot of good comments on these Grizzlies and people seem to love them for that. I've heard multiple times that this 686 that's in these new Grizzlies, which it's old. I mean, this engine's been in these since what, 05, 07, maybe something like that. Either way, it's a tried and true engine. Some say it's the best ever, but they put it back in back in 2019 after they did their Subaru thing. So here we are with the 686, supposedly very reliable. You obviously have the Ultramatic transmission, which is a very nice feature, very reliable. 10 year belt warranty, which is worth mentioning. The only problem I really see people complain about these Grizzlies is some sort of problem with the air intake, letting dust pass the filter. Not sure how big of a deal that is. I'm not gonna do anything about it. That's just me. Maybe I will someday, but as of right now, I never did anything with my Honda. I haven't done anything but put wheels and a winch on it. The Grizzly is gonna get equal treatment. The Grizzly's already had an easier life than the Honda did from the beginning. So we're trying not to go too hard on it. I've also seen problems with these rear differentials where that's all that really holds it from twisting is two little thin pieces of paper. And some people do stabilizers across the top. I'm not going to because it didn't come that way. It's not a factory option. So I'm not going to mess with that. You can see the paint on the axles has already come off after my first pressure wash. Honda paint's all still there. So that's that's something to note. But the reliability overall, besides those two things, as far as I know, is pretty much perfect. I think the wheel bearings are always pretty good in these, the drivetrain, the, you know, the, of course, the Ultramatic and the engine, all that combined is really awesome. Number four is storage and cargo, the way it carries it, the racks, stuff like that. I'm a fan of metal racks. I would honestly probably prefer the Honda racks over these, just because I like all the quick connect system and I like having multiple tie downs but you can also bolt stuff to these weld stuff to these whatever you want to do tons of options you know yamaha makes accessories that fasten on here just fine and there's always a way to add storage but if you roll this you can bend these back a can amber polaris they're plastic stuff you're going to destroy it i feel like you can actually carry solid goods on here if you want to carry two by fours you want to put some serious weight on here you can these are only weighted for i believe where is it 110 pounds in the front and 198 in the back I mean, obviously, you can carry away more than that. At least I assume. I know I've exceeded that on the Honda. But I'm a fan of these racks in general. I like metal racks. Yamaha uses what looks to be a really nice powder coat. And they have pretty nice welds on Yamaha. Pretty decent, actually. Really decent. I'm actually impressed. Welds look really good on this. So, I, I'm a fan of the big metal racks. In the same category, like I was saying, storage. You have this storage, which I obviously keep full. Okay, maybe it's obviously not waterproof. That's okay. Don't need it to be. I don't ride it un underwater. But you have this huge storage box here. I mean, I have like three pairs of gloves in there, two toboggans, where I'm from, beanies, where you're from, a pair of goggles, and a water bottle. Really convenient having this right here. Load limit's nine pounds. Love that storage right there. You have this storage on the fender here. Has a drain plug, so if it does get full of water, you can clean it. Doesn't look very waterproof either. You have that storage. I'd honestly probably be better off without that though because I don't like that ugly black lid. Maybe I'll try and paint that silver. You have this storage back here, which that's basically all it's good for is your trash because it's obviously not waterproof either. Very not waterproof. I mean, you can see inside of it. Either way, good place to throw an extra rope or something. So yeah, that's the number four thing. Racks, storage, all that good stuff. Number five has got to be the transmission. This deserves its own category because I've always been a CVT fan. I'm also a DCT fan. I'm going to pull the Rubicon over here so I can talk about this in depth. We'll crank it up and just give it a full tour. This will kind of speak for itself.
So I am a big fan of the CVT. People say this is extremely reliable, 10 year belt warranty, and the simplicity of not having to explain to every single person that ever gets on your four-wheeler how to put it in reverse. Now, if they can't figure out how to, they probably shouldn't ride it, but this is how the Grizzly works. Reverse, neutral, rest high. There's neutral, high and low, right? Come all the way back to park, simple, right? Look at how smooth this thing takes off. Extremely smooth. I don't know about new Can-Ams, but I know Can-Ams and Polaris in the past are super jerky. I know the brand new 2023 Polaris Ranger is extremely jerky when you put it in high, high range and reverse and change gears. But you can see this Grizzly, extremely responsive. So between that and then your diff lock on this Grizzly, you have pretty much the same feeling of control at low speed as you do on a foot shift or a DCT Honda. And the only problem I see with these is reliability of a CVT. But Yamaha, as you know, has solved this problem 26 years ago with the ultramatic transmission. Been super reliable. Now on the Honda, I don't mind this, okay? It's perfectly fine, but I've always said this before and people always growl at me, but if Honda would make a CVT similar to Honda, I mean Yamaha, excuse me, if they could make one that good, then why not? So on the Honda, you have automatic mode with shift through five gears on its own. So it'll just show drive, then you have neutral, hold this red button to go to reverse, right? It's still one-handed operation and you don't have to take your hands off the handlebars. You also have low range and standard high range, I guess. You can switch to manual. There's first gear. You can control your gears as you move. Reverse straight to forward. So shifting on the Honda once you're used to it is arguably easier. But you don't have any weird shifting. That's one thing with this that is nice. Is even when it's cold, you take off. It's constant smooth power all the way up to 64 miles an hour this you're going to be jerking around and not very smooth now it's time to mention a couple of other things while we're on the subject of things i like about it one thing i noticed right away getting off the honda and onto this now i don't even know if my honda power steering still works i mean look at that thing 3500 miles three years hard abuse dragon logs if you know the channel you know that four wheeler it has not had an easy life but this power steering I don't know if it works with the key on. This power steering is literally at a dead stop. It's heavy tires. It's extremely easy to turn. It's one thing I noticed with this Grizzly immediately. The power steering is wow. That's next level power steering. Like I said, I don't know if this power steering even works. You see, it actually... See, I feel like it works sometimes, not all the time. It feels like it's working better now than it was. But still, you're not you're not able to do it with two fingers. Yeah, there we go. See, that's just like horribly hard. I don't think the power steering works. You can't. Ooh. Whether that works or not, there's no question denying this power steering is awesome. Now I know on the KMs you have dynamic power steering, but that's three modes you have to worry about trying to figure out which one's right. The Grizzly's always right. There's no need to adjust it. There's no extra buttons up here to get mashed in different modes. This is very simple. And that's another thing. We'll go right into that after the power steering. I like the setup of the gauge cluster up here. I love the simplicity on the handlebars. Start, override, kill switch. Goes one way. Very simple. On, off, on, off. Headlights, high beam, off, low beam, high beam, off. Go. This is the go switch. Four wheel drive. Diff lock. Super simple. I do prefer the key location of the Honda up here. I don't like way over here. And also same with the 12 volt plug. This has plenty of information. Volt, engine temp, clock, hours, odometer, trip A, trip B, service meter, odometer. 
fuel gauge is nice, power steering, high beams there, battery light, looks like, can't really tell, there's water on it. Temp gauge, engine light, and then all your gear selects over here. And then when you have diff lock on, that's that. Not trying to be a Honda versus Yamaha comparison, but just really quick, just to show you what I'm talking about. Three different kill switch spots. One, two, two buttons for your headlights instead of one. Diff lock on the Honda is actually simpler. You just flip that up, which can be dangerous, I guess. You accidentally flip that. So it is kind of nice having an additional button behind the flip. Another thing to mention that I like, and this is actually huge. This is a big deal for me, the brakes. Front and back. Same as my Honda, front and back. Back on the Honda's cable, front and back on the Grizzly or hydraulic, which I prefer. Very nice, four wheel disc brakes on the Grizzly. So the braking system's very nice. I also like the premium look of these stainless steel or whatever this is, an aluminum combination, whatever. Nice look compared to this. One thing I like too is having a park gear. That is nice. But I do wish I had the option to have a parking brake also because I always trailer my stuff, which I don't do it very often out here in Montana anymore. But when I trailer stuff, I don't ever put it straps on it because why would I? You know, the Honda put the brake on and then the brakes are taking the beating. On this, your transmission is going to be taking the beating because you have it in park and it has wiggle room. See? But I do like that. Now, serviceability of the Grizzly, I can't tell you yet because I don't know. It does have greasable uh, joints down there and stuff. Don't know if I actually like that. A lot of people don't always look at that like it's a good thing. But I look at it like it's an extra maintenance item. Because the Honda, there's nothing to grease. So that means I, I don't have to grease it. <laughs> if you can't grease it, it means you don't have to, right? I haven't changed oil in here yet. I will be the first one to do the first oil change. I'm still debating on doing Yama Lube or Rotella like I've done in the Honda the whole time. But this is all pretty open. It looks easy to work on. The frame is definitely, I'm not going to say because I don't want to compare it to a Honda yet. But uh, I assume there's an oil filter. So yeah, that's got to be, it's got to be an easy job. It's got to be. Oil filter's just in there. It looks like it's covered in oil. We'll have to look at that. So the oil filter's right there and I assume the rest is pretty simple. So oil change are probably just as easy as a Honda, if not easier, because you don't have to take any bolts out, it's just a screw on filter. So I assume this is gonna be pretty easy to take care of. The filter's nice too. Also like the low mount of gas tank. That's really nice. Like this fill spot. I love that compared to on the Honda. Not a Honda comparison. Always moving the handlebars and stuff to get to that. So I do like that on the Grizzly. Just a quick sneak peek for the top five things I dislike. Ooh, four days, four days, hadn't even been trail ridden hardly. This is all road riding. Ooh, four days, ooh, four days, ooh, four days. Oh my gosh, four days, four days. What are these? Another thing I had to do was zip tie that back because from the factory, these were all rubbing up here making a snapping noise. So, four days. Four days. That is my fault, though. Four days. Four days. Probably the best time to take these off while everything's still fresh. See if I can do this without ripping a piece of paint off. Ooh, sweet. Freaking glue. Proving to be successful at this so far. I'm gonna have to get some stuff to get that off. That's disgusting. And then we gotta get this one off. And then we gotta get this one off. I didn't ever realize there were so many stupid stickers. Don't store gas in there, you might blow up. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm going to get in a wrestling match with these stupid stickers.
because whatever they use to put those on is something serious. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Comment your thoughts down below. Comment some ideas, videos you'd like to see of the Grizzly. Grizzly versus Honda competitions. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Four days. I also like the factory two-inch hitch receiver.